Okay, the, we are now come to part C. Part C is just a implementation guidelines. We have already probably implemented, but if you want to do some checking with the values, I've, I've given you some ideas there. So, first thing that you need to do is that you've got n number of filters, vessel membrane length is 3.5 centimeter, a small section is a sure centimeter. And you need to then have first one is 0x delta x, 2 delta, 3 delta, 127 delta x. You can calculate the resonance frequency using this equation, you'll get the resonance frequency. If you calculate them right, and your first filter is distance x is equal to 0, and fp1 from that equation is, is, is uh, that, um, 20,000. And then you do the fp2, and that's that. And third one is that one. So th like that, you have got 128 frequencies. The last frequency is 96 hertz. You can go further down, 128, 29, 130 if you want. And then after, and then if you take the ratio between this one and this one, or this one and this one, or that one and that one, they're equal. The ratios are equal. You can just do a cross check to see whether the ratios are equal. The reason we are taking equal segment. And then we need to get the reson resonant zero, which is the notch filter. How do you do that? As I said to you, we are going to keep the fix. F sad equal to 1.0429, that times the FP1. So take the FP1, F sad 1 is 1.0. Similarly, F sad 2 is 1.049 times FP2, the value. So this is how you get the zero, zero values. So these are for hand calculation checking to make sure your program is right. And then you've got to calculate the QP and QZ. I've given you QP varies 10 to 5, QZ varies that to that. And you can change these around if you want. And the bandwidth of a P is FP over QP. The bandwidth of Z is FZ over QZ. If you do a calculation for the filter one, Frequency FP is that, QP is that, bandwidth is that, FZ is that one, QZ is that one, and the bandwidth set is that one. You need to use this value, this value to calculate the coefficients. Second filter is a similar. And if you go to 128 filter, you know the frequency, you know the Q value, and the Q value from 10 to 5.5, linearly changing. Here 22 to 12, linear is changing. This is QZ, this is QP. You should have this table and uh, you will find that if you have implemented right, you get all these values. Right. Next one. The next one is your digital filter implementation. So knowing all these values, omega p and this one, omega z and this one, you use this equation. You calculate that one and that one first and then substitute here, you get a1 and a2. Calculate this one and this one second <coughs> and substitute here, you get B1 and B2. This is for filter 1, similarly filter 2, filter 3, filter 4, you have to do, keep doing. Every time you do one filter and then uh, QZ omega set changes, QP omega P changes. And the next one then, determine the 3 dB cutoff frequency. 3 dB cutoff frequency, we can say the low pass filter, 3 dB cutoff frequency, whatever F set multiplied by 1.4, we make this constant. So very easy to do that. <coughs> and by knowing that, then this is the transfer function, and we have done this already, A0 is in this one. So you know the LP, and you substitute here, you know the coefficient. That's how you find the step four. That's the implementation of step four. Once you are done, step five is the implementation of the filters, starting with the filter number one, frequency, QP, QZ, we already calculated them. If you, if you use the right, <coughs> right equation, right programming, you will find the value of K, G naught, A naught, GP, B1, B2, GZ, A1, A2, for filter one, using the previous slide. Similarly for filter two, and so on for filter. These values at least a guide for you to check where your calculations are correct. 
last section of the implementation is the important part. You need to do digital filtering of it. You can use the filter command to do the filtering. You give an impulse, impulse at the input or a sinusoid at the input and make sure you obtain 128 displacement outputs and pressure outputs for each input signal, right? And store, the, store them in the matrices as rows and, and, and columns. So you can say your matrix will be 128 output versus that's time, the samples, that's frequency, that's, um, that's the values of a membrane displacement, one matrix, and you can have another matrix of same thing, but it's pressure. This is pressure, this is time for the input. You give sinusoidal input, look at spatial differentiation. You can do time differentiation. You can do time differentiation here if you want it. And then given a signal sample that <coughs> 8 kilohertz, <coughs> what changes you have to use to think about it. So this is just the implementation step and just give you an idea of if you have done the implementation correct, you will be able to match the characteristics I showed you in part B. So I've given you enough intermediate steps values for you to check. The last slide is that mini project assessment is 20, 10% uh, for the report. Once you have completed the project on the day on a Friday of week 10, we will release the time early, so every student will be given 15 minutes for assessment. First, you will be assessed the completion of the project and you demonstrate the project, how you have done your code. You get 6 out of 30 marks for that. But the code, we want you, have, you, want, we want you to do the code, not somebody else's code. Therefore, we will be asking you to demonstrate the in-depth understanding. We will ask you to make modification to the code within that 15 minutes, small modification, and you will know where to do the modification. You run the program with us, with the tutor, and demonstrate the results. If you have done it correctly, or if you approach it correctly, and you have put it in the right place and right way, you have done it, and you will, the marks is out 14 out of 30. So, you will find this is really coupled here. If you have done this well, you will be able to do this without a problem. What we are going to ask you is not a difficult one. You're going to, it's just you need to know where to put in and how you run it. So we are going to make sure that this will make sure that every student has implemented that very well. So they are able to achieve the marks required. So this mark can be easily absorbed if you have written this part yourself. And um, if you're not sure and if you did it at last, then you will struggle a bit here. So I encourage you to, you work as a group, but when you have done it, you implement it yourself uh, and ask the tutors. Then the project report is 10 marks, that you need to submit them later on, 28. So that's all really, I've given everything, I've given you the guidance, and this is a wonderful project. And initially it looks like, oh, how am I, where are you going to start? But once you start, once you start to go, start going it, you will find this is a very, very good project and you've got a full understanding of the course at the end. This one has got everything that you have learned in, is in there. Frequency response, impulse response, phase response, and, um, and um, uh, down sampling, everything is, uh, and filter design, everything is involved in this project. Okay? All right, thank you. I hope you have understood in three parts, part A, part B, part three. I have got three small, small videos for each part. You can watch them and then do the implementation. Okay, thank you.